Hello everyone, in this video I want to share with you how I organize the All About Reading uh, curriculum so that I do not have to purchase it ever again and I can still use it over and over and over again with different children that will be coming up the line and using it. Now I did a blog post over on my blog which I will link down below where I talk about the success that I have had with All About Reading. I share my journey to discovering All About Reading, why I even decided to use it and the great success that we have had with it. So you'll want to go over to my blog and read all about that. Like I said, I'll leave it linked down below. Now I'm not going to go over everything that comes with this program. You'll want to go to their website and I'll have that link down below as well and see what components come with all the different levels of All About Reading. But I'm going to show you how I've organized level three and it's the same exact way that I've organized level one level two and level three, and we'll be organizing level four as well. So let me just point out a couple things that are on this table. First of all is the All About Reading uh, little box here. This is the review box, and if I can get it open, this is where, well, let me show you here. I have put a little sticker here that says level three because I do have all four levels, and all the boxes are the same color, so I've just labeled the level here. What I plan on doing eventually is labeling it with a color that matches so that this will be red, um, like the level three curriculum and it'll say level three on red. But all I had right now was blue. And so, you know, as homeschool moms, we just go with what we have. But this is where I have the um, phonogram review cards and the words and all of that are in here. So that's where I keep that. It's up on a shelf with the rest of this stuff. All right, the next thing I wanted to show you is the teacher's manual. I don't do anything with the teacher's manual. It is perfect how it is, and I just put a little tab, though, on the section that I'm on, and I can move that tab as I work through the curriculum with this particular student. So that's what I do there. Now, there's also books that come with the All About Reading uh, curriculum, and so level three has two books. And so what I do is that box this teacher's manual, these books, and this binder are all on a shelf together. I'm gonna to talk about what I do over here with the learning activity book. That actually gets put right in here into this binder. So the main organization that um, I have figured out that has been so, so helpful is all in this binder right here. So let me move some of these other things out of the way so we can open up this binder and see how I organized it all. Now level one is blue, it has kind of a blue theme, blue books and workbooks and stuff, and so I used a blue binder. Level two is green, and I had a green binder, but when it came to level three, which is red, and level four, which is purple, I didn't have a red or purple binder. So what I decided to do was use the white binders that I already had. I just went ahead and took the the front kind of cover of the student packet, you don't need it. And so instead of throwing it away, I just put it in the front of this binder. And then I took some red construction paper and put it on the side so that when this is sitting on the shelf with all of my other binders and books and teaching supplies, I can see easily that this is level three that goes with all the other uh, red stuff. And that's why I also wanted to label my um, reading review box with a red piece of tape as well. We'll get, I will get to that one of these days, hopefully. So what I do is I take all of the pages in the learning activity book and I'm transferring them into this binder where they will stay safe and be able to be reused over and over and over again by other children. Let me show you what it looks like inside. When you open it up, I have the progress chart right here. And um, if I have more than one student doing a particular level, I can put in two of these progress charts and they might be at different spots you know, as they're working through it at their own pace. Because again, we want them to work through this at their own pace because our kids all have different needs. And so I can just put two um, progress charts in here and then they can um, fill them out as we go along. Just a side note that if you're having two kids go through it, um, 
you definitely are then going to want to have two tabs in your teacher's manual. But one of the challenges, just letting you know, is that in the review box, you really, this is set up so that your kids are going to be reviewing things that they don't know go behind this review card. Phonograms that they don't know go behind um, this review card. And so you um, have to be a little creative in terms of, um, you know, which kids are going to be put behind the review card. And so what I have done is I have just paper clipped um, the different cards for my kids, if they're in, they're both in the, okay, so let me start over. Let me kind of rewind and say this a little bit better. Um, if I have two kids going through the same level, which I did, this is what I do. Obviously, they're on different um, uh, word cards. And so if they have some that they need to review, I go ahead and just clip, paper clip them so that I would have two sets of review cards back here. Same thing with the phonogram card review. Now, if they both happen to one catches up to the other or they both are having a really hard time with a particular phonogram sound um, and they both are they're both missing it, then I will just make another card. And when I paper clip them together, somebody will have the original and somebody will have the extra because most of the time there are some blank ones that are included. Um, when you're punching them out, there's just naturally some blank ones. And so I can then make, maybe if both kids are having trouble with this phonogram, I can make two of them. And so then again, I paper clip them for one student, paper clip them for another student, and then I can put them behind the um, review cards and uh, tab. And that way I only have to have one box. I only have to have one set of cards, even if two kids are going through the same course. So I hope that makes sense. If not, let me know down in the comments and I will try to explain it better. But I have had two kids going through the core um, one level at the same time. Over here in the pocket, I keep the little stickers and I have found that there's usually enough stickers for two students. And if I need to purchase more, if I, when I have another student coming through and I've run out of stickers, I could purchase more on their site. I could purchase something similar from a craft store, or I could just have them do something else. I've, you know, I had one child who wanted to stamp them. They wanted to put an X on it. They didn't want to use the stickers. So um, that is not something that I am concerned about. I can get creative and get stickers. I also keep a Ziploc bag, and I will show you why I want Ziploc bags in here in just a minute. I keep the tiles that we haven't punched out and aren't needing yet in here as well and any other papers. So how this is set up is all of these are in page protectors. This is a page protector. The important thing to make note of is that there are some page protectors where the holes are right here and you would have to hole punch the paper and line it up in the page protector. But these ones have the um, holes punched on an extra tab. That's the kind that you want so that you don't have to hole punch your sheets. They can just slide right in. So I've got the progress chart here. And then what I have done is I have just put in enough page protectors for all of the lessons. And like I said, I still have some to go, right? I haven't emptied this out yet, still working on that. And so I have some blank page protectors as well. What I have been doing for the most part is as I'm going through this with the first student, I keep this on my shelf and I just pull these out. I try to do a couple at a time. Maybe when they're working on something else, I'll pull them out and slowly add it in. And then once I fill this up, I can toss this because it will just be a cover and a binding and a back and I will have all of those sheets in here. So when they do, let's just turn to one. Let's say this is lesson six. When we're on lesson six, I can snap this out and I can pull out the whole page protector and use that or I can leave it in here and just pull out the pages. But what's in here? All of the pages that my student is going to need, all of those activity book pages are in here. So here are the is the new word sheet and the sentences. Um, here is for this lesson, there's some more names and words that they were going to do. And then here is an activity. So we had to cut out these pieces of paper and there was little um, name tabs and stuff, uh, little sheets of paper with names on it that then they would be putting on here. So this is one activity. There's also another activity with 
uh, kind of cupcakes and the cupcake top. I had to cut those out. I didn't want to just throw them in here loosely. So I used the Ziploc bag. I bundled them up together, each little thing separately, put them in the Ziploc bag, and they all go right into this page protector so that now I've used this with my first child. When it comes time to use it with my second child, it is super easy. It's already there. I don't have to cut anything out. It's just, it's, it's already, and I can use it again and again. What I had found uh, before was that I started to just, you know, rip out the page and my student did it. And then I was like, oh, I'll just throw it away because I'm going to need to buy a new activity book for each child. No, 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 no. I realized I can't do that. This is too expensive for me having seven kids. Um, I want to be able to reuse this over and over and over again. So this is the solution that I came up with. Let me show you another one. Here is lesson number nine. So I pull this out. It has the sheet that they would read and then this was something that we had to cut out here and I cut them out and, and this is big enough. I could just slide it right into the page protector. All right, let's look here um, at lesson 10. This one has the little word flippers. So again, I can pull this out. There's the sheet of paper that they're gonna read and here's their word flippers. They're already assembled. So when the next child, number two, number three, however many kids I end up using this with, they can easily, we can quickly pull this out. I don't have to cut this out and staple it and assemble it right on the spot. I don't ever have to do it again. It's all done for me. Now, there are a few activities that I have found in, um, the activity books in various levels, and it's it's a very minimum number of, of activities where they're actually supposed to write something. Um, I don't think I have an example here of one, but what we have done there is we've just either done it orally, um, if I think it's something, a concept that it doesn't really matter if they're learning how to spell it or write it. It's just something that they could answer orally. We just did it orally. Um, if it was something that I felt like it was important for them to actually write down, then we would just write it on a separate piece of paper. Because for me, I, I wanted to have all of this available for future kids. So here's another one where I put the big sheet, the different sheets in here, and then I have a whole bunch of different baggies with the different components or parts that I have already cut out and um, pre-assembled if needed into the uh, page protectors. So I hope this was helpful. If you are using All About Reading and you know that you're going to be using it with multiple kids, this really is a great way to not only store the um, activity books and all the different components to it, but to store it in a way that they are safe and secure and they can be used time and time again with future kids. If you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments below. And if you have a creative way that you have been storing your all about reading curriculum, would you let us know down in the comments as well as always great to hear from other homeschool moms. Sometimes I think I have a fabulous idea and then I realize everybody's already been doing it for a long time, or one of you has an even better idea on how to improve it and make it even better. So I would love to hear from you. Leave your comments down below. Um, but again, hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for watching.